But Sting knocked out Luger to win Battle Bowl, which kind of sets up this match, the title match later on in the evening. Lex Luger, who's the WCW champion, against Sting. Now, the thing here about Luger is he's on his way out. What do you think about him doing business on the way out, losing to his best buddy, Sting, of course, but him doing things you know, the right way. We'll get into the main event later, but you know what I mean? Like he's on the way out. He's the champion. You got to lose the title, right? In the best buddies. And, you know, it was an, un, was an unwritten rule that that's what you're supposed to do. He did business the right way. I what always do you, like Lex. What do you think about him wanting to leave? Like, is that okay to you? Do you think like, Ah, stick around, Lex. We're, we're building something here. 160K, maybe we can build something here. Well, you saw what they did with him when he went over. He had his own shows, right? Remember that was when Ike Pro was around? So, technically speaking, he's on WrestleMania 8, which is, you know, April of 92, but he doesn't wrestle for, you know, for almost a year, I guess, technically, because of his contract with WCW. They let him out of it, but he was in the WBF, like you said, the ICO Pro, whatever, that kind of stuff. So he's in the World Bodybuilding Federation, but he's not in the WBF as a wrestler. So he's yeah. leaving WWE to be like the face of the WBF and then eventually be a wrestler in WWF, but that's not for another year. Yeah, and they gave him, I'm sure they gave him a great deal to go over. What do you think about that, though? Bodybuilding? Like, you're a wrestler, Lex. What are you doing here? Well, he had a great body. And maybe, you know, Vince was always a body guy. And maybe putting him in that show for a year, it's sort of like they did Backlund, remember? They brought Backlund in for a year just for TV, over a year. They exposed him in a different way. Maybe it was, they were hoping that, I think they were hoping that bodybuilding show was going to catch on and they bring some crossover people. That's I just, saw, I just saw some awful WBF thing where this guy comes out. You know, he's he's jacked to the nines, and he has a fake gun. And it, it's like, yeah, I guess support of their big event. And there was ninjas in the crowd, and he was pretending to shoot them with the gun. Oh, it's so bad. I was like, oh, my God, no wonder WBF failed. It was just, I don't know, it was just such a corny idea. And I don't know if people that into bodybuilding as far as, like, making it into a pay-per-view event and stuff. It's just... Well, I personally don't think so because I think it was kind of sort of ahead of its time. I don't even think they have pay-per-views now for bodybuilder, do they? No, they just have big shows like Arnold Classic and stuff, yeah. but nothing like pay-per-view-wise, no. And Mr. Olympia, they, they've shrunk. Yeah. Their audience has shrunk, believe it or not. Yep. People are training more, but not many – People are still trying to get jacked to death. To me, though, Luger, I don't know, I guess it's like a slippery slope or, you know, maybe I could be wrong, but it's almost like he wasted a, a year of his prime, of his prime years, kind of sitting on the sidelines and being in WBF um, because of the contract with WCW. He couldn't wrestle for the WWF until 93. So, I don't know, to me, it just felt like he might have wasted a year of his prime. Well... I know what you mean, but this guy is paying you all this money. He promised you everything. So you're biding your time for the year. And he thought he was going to get the big brass ring, right? Yep. And we've talked about this before. Man, Vince screwed up his booking like crazy.